calling video range. A space projectile has just left the planet Earth. What do we do? Our only chance is a flash between them before they meet. Hello everyone, my name is Bob, and this is Space Colonization with Bob number three, in which I destroy all your dreams of colonizing Mars. <laughs> Not because I want to, but because I sort of need to. Um, I mean, it's sensible that uh, for generations, probably, uh, people have been thinking about colonizing Mars. Um, and there's some good reasons for that. Um, Mars has an atmosphere, though not much of one. Uh, and it's not going to keep you from dying in the, in the if you go outside in your skivvies. Um, it has a day that's about a day long. Uh, it has one third Earth's gravity, which might even be enough to significantly offset the uh, effects of um, uh, space ad adaptation syndrome. In other words, your bones and muscles getting weak in space. Uh, so there's a lot of reasons, a lot of a lot of pros uh, regarding Mars. Unfortunately, there are a number of cons uh, as far as colonizing Mars, especially in anything like the near term. The near term meaning the next 500 years. Um, one is, uh, the atmosphere, if you're trying to land on Mars, the atmosphere on Mars is not enough to slow you down, but it is enough so you still need a heat shield. Uh, so you not only have to have the uh, extra mass of the heat shield to keep you from burning up in the Martian atmosphere. You have to have the extra mass of parachutes and also the extra mass of, of uh, breaking rockets because parachutes by themselves not going to stop you. Um, so as far as getting down to uh, Mars, uh, you, may, you may have um, followed the, um, uh, the uh, landing of the uh, Curiosity rover um, and they were talking about the seven minutes of terror. Uh, well, they were definitely terror-stricken for good reason. Um, landing on Mars is a very difficult thing uh, for the four mission reasons. Uh, you still have to go through the atmosphere uh, in such a way as to not burn up. Um, you have to probably use parachutes to slow you down some, and you're still going to have to use uh, reactive thrust uh, to keep you from smashing into the surface. Um, so there are those factors against uh, Mars. Uh, if you're trying to get anything back up from Mars, uh, you know, you, you might have, want to have Mars take its place in the overall space commerce theme, s overall space commerce situation. You know, if you wanted to, like, export uh, some raw materials from Mars, forget about it. Uh, the, the gravity is such that it, it, just, it just wouldn't make sense. And everything you could get on Mars, you could get on the asteroids. Um... To, you know, for all practical purposes. Uh, also, let me read you a, a list of the constituents of the Martian soil. Uh, we have silicon dioxide, which is sand. Iron oxide, which gives Mars the uh, rusty red color. Aluminum oxide, uh, magnesium oxide, uh, calcium oxide. Sulfur trioxide, which reacts with water to make sulfuric acid. Um... We have um, uh, sodium hydroxide, which is caustic uh, soda or lye. Uh, titanium dioxide, used for making ti ti titanium and I think white paints as well. Uh, phosphorus pentoxide, a powerful desiccant and it's corrosive. Chlorine, the same thing that they use for chlorine bleach. Toxic. Uh, potassium oxide, reacts strongly with water. Uh, manganese oxide, uh, which is used in various, um, uh, manganese is used in various alloys. Uh, chromium oxide, which is used for green paint. Uh, and traces of nickel, zinc, and bromine. Uh, one thing you'll notice is not on this list. Uh, that thing is nitrogen. Uh, nitrogen is needed for uh, plant life, uh, and it's also needed as a, a buffer gas uh, uh, for uh, atmospheres in habitats. Um, 
you don't want to breathe um, pure oxygen under any kind of significant atmospheric pressure because everything will burn. Um, and there's no there's uh, a really tiny amount of argon gas in the uh, Martian atmosphere that could possibly be used as a substitute buffer gas, um, but uh, but you're still going to need nitrogen for plant life. Uh, so that's a big problem. So um, in the near term, as in the next 500 years or so, uh, talking about colonizing Mars, when there are a number of other colonization targets that are make, make um, uh, a lot more sense, um, just talking about colonizing Mars doesn't make sense. We should focus on other things. Uh, here's another problem with Mars. Uh, getting there uh, takes 700 some odd days. I forget the exact figure. 700 some odd days. I mean, no, uh, let me back up. Uh, optimal transfer orbits to Mars from Earth uh, come around every 700 and some odd days uh, over over a year. Um, I know that's that's two years. Once every two years or so. Um, so 700 and some odd days is, is the, the the amount of time we have to wait from one optimal transfer time to another. Uh, so if we uh, send out a, a Mars probe now and want to do it again in a couple months, we have to wait two years. Um, now you think, well, you know, it's it's far out there. You'd, you'd have to, to um, uh, you'd have to it would be that long for anything, right? Wrong. Um, because of the way of the relationship between Earth and Mars, um, it's actually uh, a lot easier uh, to get to, say, Ceres, uh, which is a minor planet in the asteroid belt. Ceres, optimal transfer orbits to Ceres come around every 300 some odd days. Uh, that's half. That's twice as often. Um, and so uh, that that's awful damn inconvenient if you're wanting to send stuff on a regular basis. Um, I think it goes without saying that Mars is also, also very far away. Uh, the the, the uh, relative benefits to um, colonizing Mar Mars as versus the Moon, yes, it's tr absolutely true that the Moon lacks a lot of useful things uh, and also doesn't have nearly near as much gravity, which may mean that you'd have to take some steps to um, you know, to somehow counteract that, uh, so people don't get space adaptations, a, a sickness. Um, but you can always, you know, bring stuff in from the asteroids, and, and there's probably going to be some asteroid that's uh, got something you need uh, at, at almost any time. You know, you don't have to wait for uh, an optimal transfer orbit to come up. You just, the, 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 the asteroid belt is, is circular, so you just Pick an asteroid that's going to be sort of nearby where you need to when you need to leave, and you just just go there, bring stuff back. Um, it's still a long trip, but you don't have to take Cubans on that. You just go take a send a robotic craft out to the, the asteroid belt, you know, pick up some stuff, bring it back, and you can do that, you know, like all the time. Um, so uh, the moon as a colonization target uh, really knocks uh, Mars into a tin hat. Um, there is another there is a benefit to to Mars, which is um, if you go outside, you can almost uh, imagine that you're on a really bad spot on Earth. Uh, uh, not not a, not a pleasant spot on Earth, but you know, a spot on Earth. You can almost imagine, aside from the fact that if you take your space helmet off, off your your mucous membranes are going to boil. Uh, aside from that, you can almost sort of imagine that you're on Earth, which that is going to be an issue that we're going to have to address, which is psychological effects of, you know, you know, people aren't going to want to live in a submarine for years or on end or the, for the rest of their lives. They're going to want to have some feeling of, you know, something pleasant to look at or something. Not that Mars is that pleasant to look at, but probably beats the moon. Um, so that is an issue we're going to have to address at some point. Um, I'm going to talk about it at, probably at a later in a later episode, uh, but. On the whole, the the problems with colonizing Mars are extremely large. It is not a really optimal colonization target, in my opinion.
um, series is uh, as far as we know. Now we've we haven't sent we're sending the Dawn spacecraft there um, uh, now. It'll be there in 2015. Um, but as far as we can tell from right now, of course you know things may change. Ceres would make a much better colonization target than Mars, aside from the fact that it has negligible gravity. Um, so, as a, as a colonization target, right now, you know, in, for, in terms of the technology we're going to have in the next 500 years or so, um, Mars sucks. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry to bust your bubbles. Bubbles. I know there's a lot of people here who are big Mars fans, and I'm a big Mars fan too. I, I, I think Mars is fascinating as from a intellectual point of view, uh, as a place to live, uh, practically speaking, it sucks. Sorry. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't want to come to that realization myself, but I have to. Um, now, uh, we're talking about distant future. Um, Mars is still the best target we have for terraforming. Um, and I think possibly there's the, the, the old, uh, you may have, may have heard me say something similar to this, which is if it can't be fixed with a hammer, it can't be fixed. Uh, well, Mars, I think a lot of the problems that Mars has, have, has uh, would be fixed by smashing large icy bodies into it repeatedly. Uh, and sort of the, the fix it with a hammer approach. Uh, you have smashed large icy bodies, some containing nitrogen, others containing water, and so forth. Smash the fuck out of Mars. That it, you know, that it, that the that the debris fall down, um, you know, put some plants or maybe genetically engineer some plants to cope with that that new environment. I think that that's that's probably workable. I think it probably at some point, five hundred to a thousand years from now, um, we could do that. Uh, and that's another reason for leaving Mars alone, uh, which is where it's going to be kind of iffy to smash the fuck out of Mars and in order to terraform it. If there's already a million or five million people living on it, uh, people tend to ha have an issue with you smashing large bodies into their planet. Um, so for those reasons, I would say probably we don't even need to th be thinking about Martian colonization for right now. Uh, we probably should just decide we're going to leave it. When time comes when we're actually able to terraform stuff, 500 to 1,000 years from now, uh, we'll, we will terraform it. Um, but for the, any kind of near term, I mean, I'm and I'm sorry to say it. I really am. I, I'm I'm sorry to to have to um, uh, bust the bubble here because this is my bubble too. I mean, I, I would have loved for Mars to have made a better target colonization target than it is, but it's not a very good ta colonization target as of now. Uh, and um, people who are talking about sending people to, to Mars to live there uh, permanently, uh, the I guess Mars one people. Uh, I mean, I wish them the best of luck, but I think they're they're just looking to set themselves up for a world of hurt and or slash death. Um, so, mm, that's that. Uh, again, Mars does have some beneficial aspects from a colonization point of view. One's got gravity. You know, we, we're going to have to figure out some way of, of substituting for gravity on bodies like the moon and so forth that don't have it. Um, I mean, we can do do, do the uh, send people up to ro rotating stations and stuff, uh, but uh, we're gonna probably need a better method than that, possibly. Um, so it has gravity. Uh, it has an almost sort of Earth-like appearance if you squint and and don't pay attention to the fact that everything is butterscotch colored and um, it looks like a uh, the most parched desert ever imagined. But I mean, it, it, you know, it, you can go outside. In a matter of speaking, you can you know see s s rocks and stuff. You know, it's it's much much more Earth appearing than the Moon is. Um, so there's that. Uh, aside from that, though, yeah, it's not worth talking about really. Uh, I mean, even even the moon, the Moon wouldn't be worth talking about except for the fact that it's so close. Um, we're going to need to have some sort of uh, imports uh, of nitrogen to the moon, and, and in the case of the moon, we're going to have to have nitrogen, carbon, all sorts of crap, because the moon is really very, very restricted range of minerals. But we'd have to do that with Mars anyway, because Mars doesn't have any nitrogen to speak of. Um, so, um, 
and I don't want to I don't want to tread on uh, turf for a whole other um, whole other um, episode. Um, the, the 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 moons of Mars, uh, Phobos and Deimos, uh, are are actually better colonization targets than, than Mars is. Uh, again, the problem is is that it's 700 some odd days uh, between op optimal you know, orbital transfer times. Uh, and that's a bit of a problem. Especially when you have the series just a little bit further out uh, that comes around twice as often. So, uh, and the series uh, is bigger and may have more uh, in the way of valuable compounds that will be useful for say the moon, um, you know, to export to the moon. So that's it. Uh, sorry to be the bearer of bad bad Martian tidings. Uh, it, Mar Mars is still the the best candidate we have for terraforming. Uh, there's, I mean, barring some kind of really scary levels of technology, we're not going to be able to terraform Venus. Certainly not going to be able to terraform Mercury. Um, Mars is pretty much it as far as terraforming planets in the solar system. Uh, so, um, and I think that's given, you know, uh, a level of... Well, terraforming Mars would require a, a level of stick to more than anything that, that is just simply beyond what anything we've shown thus far. Oops, looks like my, my camera shut down in a while in mid-sentence, so uh, I guess I'll wrap it up. Um, as I was starting to say um, uh, at the end, which probably cut it cut off, um, uh, we're going to be dealing with issues coming coming up. There, there are so many issues involved in space colonization that we I could probably be doing this for the rest of my life, and I wouldn't touch on them all. Um, there are uh, very significant human factor issues. People aren't going to want to live a sucky life in space. Even though it's in space, if it sucks, they're, they're going to be thinking twice about, about mo moving out to, to space. Uh, so you have to make find ways to, not only for people to survive, uh, but also for them to find ways for, for them to find life worthwhile. Um, and um, uh, that may require some uh, engineering process uh, programs on uh, on epic scales. Um, so, so that's one thing is, how do you keep people from going insane in space? <laughs> that's that's a biggie. Um, or or just you know studying the risks, walking out of airlock. Um, so that's one thing. People don't want to live their lives in submarines. Um, even those even submariners would like to get outside once in a while, right? Um, so that's one thing. Resource extraction. Um, there's a lot of things that the the Earth has been very very good to us. Um, there's all kinds of raw materials on the Earth. Uh, there's all kinds of materials for 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 extracting raw materials into usable forms. Uh, um, you know, titanium uh, dioxide by itself is just some powder stuff. You can't do much with it except for make white paint or something. Um, titanium, on the other hand, is a real damn useful thing. Uh, unfortunately, the process of turning titanium dioxide into titanium is really complicated and uses a lot of rare, bizarre materials, processes. Um, the Earth has been very good to us in that respect. Uh, and so we need to find new ways of, uh, of extracting uh, raw materials into usable forms uh, and that, that make use of materials that we're going to have out there. Um, Aluminum would be a big one. Um, one of the most significant issues in lunar colonization is uh, how are we going to be able to make aluminum without having to import massive amounts of either fluorine or carbon. Um, so any, anyone, anyone who is able to, to figure out a way to make aluminum uh, using only uh, lunar indigenous materials is going to be the patron saint of lunar colonization. Uh, so there's a, a number of issues we're going to be all kinds of issues we're going to be exploring in future episodes. Uh, like I say I've, I could probably be doing this for the rest of my life we probably still wouldn't cover everything. Uh, but anyway this is that's it for this episode of Space Colonization with Bob uh, and until next time Hasta la vista!
Adiós.